Hi there, this is Jen and thanks so much for joining me today. Today I am creating a card where I will be using masking fluid to mask off a stencil. So um, this is a really easy thing to do. Um, there's lots of different masking fluids out there that are available. I am going to be using the Nuvo masking fluids, but um, if you were to stop into Michael's, you would be able to find some masking fluid in the art department. Um, they also have masking pens, um, but it's a really cool product that you can use a lot of different ways in card making. So um, I'm just gonna show how to use it uh, to mask off the stencil and I found a maybe another cool use for it as well so the products that I'm using are visible image stamps products and this first one is a stencil called Daisy Daisy and then I'm going to use these stamps called grunge tones and there's three of those and I am going to be working on some Bristol smooth cardstock for this and the first thing I'm gonna do is lay out my stamps um, I kind of wanted them to be basically in the background of the stencil and so I wanted to make sure that those were placed exactly where I wanted them and so I went ahead and placed them on top of the stencil and then grabbed those with the door of my Misty and I'm going to be doing these white embossed so I prepped my paper with my embossing or my anti-static bag and I'm going to use some white pigment ink and I actually did stamp this up several times before I used the embossing powder and so I'm just going to add some a fine white detail embossing powder on top of that white pigment ink and then I will take my heat tool and melt that embossing powder and then once that is done I am going to take the uh, stencil and lay it down across that panel and um, the bottle of my masking fluid clogged up um, so I just went ahead and took the lid off and put that on a piece of leftover plastic packaging and I grabbed an old paintbrush and I'm just using that to apply the masking fluid to my stencil now I didn't want this to be perfectly masked and I actually wanted it a little bit more um, unmasked space than what I actually got but I still like the way it turned out so it's all good um, so when I was doing this I let the masking fluid dry until it's slightly tacky not like wet wet just slightly tacky and I realized when I started putting the inks using the daubers that the stencil was staying in place really well and so um, I think I'm going to try that in the future. I don't particularly like using sprays to keep my stencils in place, so I usually just tape them down. Um, but masking fluid is super easy to remove. It doesn't leave a residue. Um, and so I think I'm going to try next time when I have a detailed stencil, adding a little masking fluid to it, and I think that'll help it stick a lot better. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing that I learned um, doing this video. So after I blended all my colors, I removed the stencil and I started rubbing the masking fluid off with my fingers and then I was like, uh, oops. Um, I didn't mean to do that actually. I didn't want to remove the masking fluid until I had done my background. And so I stopped where I was and I went ahead and took um, the finger dauber and used the Lime Ricky on the background. I just was really a lot more careful around the areas that I had already removed the mask on. Um, and then so after I've got my background blended on there, I go ahead and remove the rest of the masking fluid by just rubbing it with my finger. It's super easy to remove. Um, but I felt like I had lost a little bit of the definition of the flower. And so what I did was I took the Lime and Cello color and I'm using a finger dauber again. And I'm just basically going against the edge of those flower petals um, to kind of give it a little bit more definition so that you can see that flower a little bit better. And I really love the areas where you see that darker Tiki Torch ink, which is like the orange ink towards the center of the flower, um, that is where there was no masking fluid. And I really love how that ink just sits there and kind of gives a little bit of definition to the insides of those flowers. Um, so after I've done that, I'm gonna take the Lime Ricky color again with my finger dauber and just go around the edges and darken those edges up just a little bit. 
and then I felt like it needed something else. So I am using a little bit of Creative Expressions Luster Polish, and this is Bubblegum. And I'm going to use my Craft Knight to go, Knife to um, apply that. It has a little um, sponge in the handle of the product, but I did not want to use that. I wanted to use my um, little craft knife so I had a little bit more control. And then I'm taking the other side of a paintbrush, and I'm just tapping it into those little circles of polish and I think it uh, it basically just removes a little bit of the polish so that more light shines in it if that makes any sense <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense to me um, and then I went ahead and I splattered with both some white ink as well as some gold ink and then the sentiment I'm going to use is from a set called voices in your head and I am using this VersaFine Claire to ink that up. And this is the Fallen Leaves. And I just inked up the words, you are incredible. And then I'm adding a few little gems. And that will finish off the card. I really like the summery feel of the card in the bright kind of sunshiny way. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it or find it informative, please go ahead and give a thumbs up. Um, as always, I thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'd really love that. Um, and that is it. Thanks so much. I hope to see you next time.